right? Mm. Uh, and yet, the reaction of the region has been uh, very weak. In fact, it has been almost absent. Right. So the fact that you have a major challenge, uh, an existentialist challenge, and the fact that the region is, is at a moment when its weakness has made it unable to respond is very serious. So you think it's the regional weakness that has made it unable to react appropriately, or do you think that they don't regard the IS as a threat to themselves? Well, I think it's a multi th there are many factors. For, uh, you know, I mean, you have to say that Iraq is also at a very uh, 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 bad stage in its political development, right. that it's divided, the uh, leadership of the country was lacking. Uh, it, it's, it's almost difficult to put Iraq together again. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, if you look at the region, definitely there is a lack of capacity in terms of perceiving the threat, right. analyzing it, looking at options for reaction, and then formulating a reaction. Even formulating a reaction to the role of external factors. Mm. Today, when you were talking just now about uh, the Mosul Dam, uh, the, U the US forces played an important role in helping the Kurds recapture the dam. Now, where is the reaction of the Arab world? Mm. Uh, the, 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 military, the military assistance that is coming in is coming in directly to uh, the Kurdish entity. Mm which means that the Kurdish entity now has uh, direct international uh, de facto recognition mm. that the army of Kurdistan is going to be m stronger and stronger and you will come to a moment when the Kurds will declare an independent state and who can oppose them. Right. So there, is, there are very serious dynamics as a result of what's happening now. And I am one of the people who is really disappointed and surprised at the lack of response from the Arab system, mm. whether the Arab League. The Arab League has a meeting coming up on the 5th of September, Council of Ministers of Foreign Affairs. I, I was looking at the agenda today. There's nothing on Iraq. Right. How could you be meeting at this critical moment and so late in the day and yet not addressing such a major threat? So there is a big problem, I think. And you mentioned something that's very important, that the Kurds could declare an independent state, and then that would obviously mean Iraq again being divided, which is in essence what Arab, well, what the Arab nation doesn't want. Well, it? well, it's it's the nemesis of the Arab national idea that right. uh, uh, the, the Arab world uh, may c combine a number of uh, different uh, identities, mm. but together they share so much that the idea of a regional. Uh, organization, the idea of a regional common market, a regional destiny, makes sense. And the whole world is moving in that direction. But here we are traveling in the opposite direction. Right. We're going towards more division. We're going towards ethnic divisions along uh, tribal and religious dividing lines, and plus with a huge amount of atrocities. So it will leave a lot of bitterness. Right. I'll come to you, Dr. Ibrahim. Now, obviously, again, I'd like to first take an, um, just your overall impression of what's happening in Iraq now. Well, I, I totally agree with uh, Mr. Ambassador uh, Mohammed Anis, and uh, probably if I would have to add something to that, uh, I would see some positive slots looming in the horizon in the last couple of days, uh, starting with the, the, uh, the appointment of the president, Fouad mm. Masoum, and followed by uh, the nomination of uh, Haider Abadi, the, the deputy uh, uh, spokesperson of the, uh, the parliament, as prime minister, uh, uh, replacing uh, 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 Nour Maliki, uh, and which caused at the beginning, the beginning hours, uh, a lot of uh, uh, problematic uh, reactions from the Maliki side and, and his supporters and his coalition. Mm. But uh, under um, sort of uh, uh, patriotic uh, um, uh, pushes or, or, or uh, pressure from inside and also international pressure coming from the states and in, in United Nations and, and other superpower in the world. Uh, at last, he, he accepted the nomination of uh, Haider Abadi, uh, opening the way for um, a, a positive expectations in the coming future. Uh, today, also, 
Um, I knew something about the Kurd uh, agreement amongst themselves, the four big groups in, in Kurdistan. They had a meeting uh, uh, a few hours ago, or, or mm. this morning probably, and they agreed that they would um, uh, uh, join hands with the, the, f the federal government in Baghdad in terms of forming the new government. Mm. Uh, of course, details are not yet available, but still from the other side, I go back to the words of Mr. Ambassador, who pointed at the, 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 the concerns of regionally of the situation in Iraq, talking specifically about the, 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 the wave of um, extremists and in, in IS mm. uh, behavior and attitude in the last uh, couple of weeks. And a lot of questions are there. Who is supporting them? Who is providing them with money? Who is mm. providing them with tools, with, with weapons? They have uh, heavy weapons, and they have everything. And they are moving very fast. Even the, the Iraqi army, you know, sp you know uh, billions of US dollars have been spent over the Iraqi army in the last uh, four or five years. And, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, he was defeated. And they were defeated, uh, you know, just mm. like that, you know, in no time. The question is, that they mostly occupy the, the northern region of Iraq today. And uh, unless the United States intervened, uh, you know, a few days ago, with the uh, aerial attacks or bombardment mm -hmm. to their sites, they would have been even expanding in terms of their uh, uh, influence on the region. We'll get into the details of that and who they are and what do they want and what mm -hmm. are their plans for the region. But before that, let's take a look again at Haider al-Abadi's uh, appointment. Because a lot of people are saying, really, there is no difference between Haider al-Abadi and Nuri al-Maliki. They're both Shiites. They both come from the ruling state of no coalition. So what's the difference between these two men? No, there must be a difference. Actually, Nur Maliki himself is, is not a 100% Shia. I mean, yes, probably his policies mm. during his two terms were more or less uh, going to the, uh, the interest of, of some segments, uh, uh, and not, the, not all of them, of the Iraqi community. But it's still, you cannot say that, uh, uh, you know, the, it's, it's totally divided over uh, ethnic uh, or, uh, 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 borders between different Iraqi components of the community component. Well, the positive thing about Haider Abadi, he's just a new face. In, mm. And Maliki has been burned down in the last uh, mm. uh, few years. A lot of his uh, policies and a lot of his actions in the last couple of years have been controversial in term from, from the Sunni side no. and from the Kurdish side as well. Right. And if you we still, we, we know that the, the, the Kurds have uh, uh, withdrawn their ministers from the, the, the government. Mm. And a lot of problems happened in the last couple of years between him as a person, as a prime minister, and other key figures and the other segments mm. in, in the Iraqi community. So uh, Maliki being away from the political scene is, is a real achievement. And Haider Abadi is, uh, is also a bright uh, name in, 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 in the Iraqi uh, political uh, stage. No. Uh, he has good history as, as a politician, moderate one. And, uh, you know, uh, I think Iraqis, even, uh, and this is always what I used to say, that where is the community, where is the society of what is going on on the political scene? Today, I believe that Iraqis, normal people, realize more than ever that they have to come together, whether they are Shia, whether they are Sunni, whether mm. they are, uh, whatever their uh, uh, religious or ideological uh, affiliation are, they have to come together today. This is the biggest uh, challenge in their history. I mean, they don't right. do this today. I think that this could be the last chance for them. Okay. Ambassador Mohammed, do you see any difference between the, the two men as, um, as Mr. Uh, as Dr. Ibrahim just mentioned? No, there is a difference. I think, uh, uh, yeah, yes, you, your question w there was a good one because uh, uh, Badi was the spokesperson for the party of the French <laughs> Prime Minister, so obviously he belongs to that kind of political yeah. trend. But I think Maliki at the end came to symbolize a certain rigidity and inability to make compromises, uh, a formula of government that was more in line with uh, uh, sectarianism, mm. uh, perhaps an element of, uh, um, I would say rather an, a kind of, uh, a naive kind of uh, uh, Iranian uh, uh, influence. Mm. So I think there, there any, anything that can move away from that 
was important. And there was a critical factor because the United States conditioned its military intervention on a change in Baghdad. Right. So this at least opened the, the doors for obviously a, a, a military intervention that, that had become very necessary at the end. Uh, whether the, it's too late in the day, day to save Iraq as a country, as we know it, the Iraq, which was a result of the San Remo uh, conference in mm -hmm. 1920, whether that formula uh, is salvageable or it's too late, we'll have to wait and see. Because uh, the, the reality is that the Kurdish entity in Iraq, and now also in Syria, is starting to have so many trappings of an independent state mm. that it's very difficult to see them rolling back. Right. When you start seeing uh, an entity, the entity that has its own flag, it has its own international representation, it st is starting to uh, have direct international relations with outside parties. Um, th it, it, it seems that that has traveled too far along the way to pull it back. Mm. At the same time, the relations, the Sunni-Shia relations inside Iraq have gone through so many difficult times over the last 10, 11 years that it's very difficult to see them working together. It, it will be a great act of statesmanship right. if the present government manages to pull this together, comes mm -hmm. together with a federal state formula. Whether it will survive or not, there are just too many things, too many challenges against it. Right. But does an independent Kurdish state serve the theory that some analysts have put forward that there is a plan to divide the Middle East? I am not uh, one of those people who believe in conspiracy theories. Right. I believe that uh, you have a set of dynamics in the region and there are very objective reasons for those happening. Mm. And when we study history, we, we, we find out why these things are happening. So it's not as if we're waiting for an outside conspiracy. It's that you have uh, very real reasons for what's happening now. Mm. Uh, I would argue that it probably is not in the interests of many uh, states in the world, whether they are big powers or regional powers. It's not in their interest to see this happening. For example, I don't think it's really in the interest of Turkey to see an independent Kurdish state, because that will visit them very soon. Right. So I don't think the Turks would be very happy to see this. I don't think that a country like Saudi Arabia, even a country like Iran, would necessarily feel very comfortable with the Turkish 